this lesson is the last lesson in chapter three, and we are going to be finishing up with practicing how to divide when there are decimals in both the dividend and the divisor. So here we go. <clears throat> Please fill out your table of contents. Page 15 is going to be called Dividing with Decimals. You have a green piece of paper that I gave you in class for uh, the video for homework. And after we fill it out, if you trim it down and glue it in, that would be uh, something that you need to come to class with it in your notebook. And so as you can see, uh, I have something important to say. When we are dividing with decimals and the decimals in the divisor, last lesson, that wasn't the case. The divisors were always whole numbers. But now, that's going to change. The good thing though, and we have to make sure we're always very conscious of whether there is a decimal in the divisor or not, is because we never want to divide when there is a decimal in the divisor. We have to change it so that it is a whole number instead. So in your notes, here's how we're going to change it. So the first thing that you have to realize is that the divisor, in order to divide, has to be a whole number. That's why you need to be on high alert. Whenever you find a decimal in the divisor, you know you're gonna to have to change it. If it's not, we're going to make the divisor a whole number by multiplying it by a power of 10. So my tangent in the video before was actually very helpful now. So this, when you multiply by a power of 10, power of 10 meaning 100 or 1,000 or 10,000, this will then move the decimal point to the right. That's the good news because then it'll be a whole number. So fill out our IGHT. Now the important thing is once you multiply the divisor by a power of 10, say you multiply the divisor by 100, you also have to multiply the dividend by 100. So whatever you do to the divisor, you must do the same thing to the dividend. After you manipulate the decimal point by multiplying by powers of 10, you'll have a whole number as your divisor, yay, and then your dividend will be different. The decimal point will be in a different spot. The third point, I made it red here just because I want you to make sure you get into this habit, is I want you to rewrite the new problem that you now have. After you have that new problem, it's just like the last lesson, dividing by a whole number. You're going to estimate and divide using the traditional proportional quotients that we went over. One little tip if you like to divide the traditional way, here is a mnemonic device. I use these a lot. They help you remember things. You can create your own. Uh, sometimes there are songs that get uh, created to help you remember things, and this is one for division that's the traditional uh, method. So does McDonald's serve cheeseburgers is the mnemonic device. And the D stands for divide. And so there's a symbol for that. The M stands for multiply. The S stands for subtract. After you multiply, you have to subtract. The cheese, the C stands for check. You really want to check your subtraction because that's oftentimes where kids make mistakes. And the B for burgers actually stands for how you bring down, and we'll draw an arrow down, the next digit. So it's a little cool mnemonic device to help you remember traditional division. So Below, on the bottom of your green sheet, is an example. We're going to do one. Just a little note. Um, if you want to space it out in your notebook to see whether or not you're going to have room in your actual notebook page to turn the book and, and do some 
some spacing. Um, you can cut it out now and see how it fits. Um, you can also always go on to the next page to do the work associated with this example. It does need to be in your notebook somewhere. And if you want to take a minute and figure out where that's going to be, um, then you'll decide whether you're going to actually write this on the green page or if you prefer to use the lines and the columns, you can turn and manipulate your, your notebook. So here's our example. No context, just straight. Please divide these numbers. The notes that we took on the different ways to show division is very important for this uh, lesson because you have to know which one is the dividend and which one is the divisor. This gets a little bit more complicated when it's in a word problem. So we'll do that on an example next. But because we know when you're showing division horizontally, the first number is always the dividend. So we're going to put the 51 hundredths inside and then the 2 tenths outside as our divisor. Now we have to do the multiply by power of 10 trick. So when we multiply by 10, the decimal point moves over one spot. That makes it a 2. We like that. We have to do the same thing for the dividend. Notice I drew two arrows, and they're red, so that they stand out. Now I'm going to come over here and actually rewrite my problem. So now... I have 2 as the divisor, and 5.1 is my new dividend. So let's go ahead and start to divide this. Before we do, we're going to estimate. I'm going to change the 5 to a 4, so that I think my answer is going to be somewhere around 2. And now we can go ahead and divide. We're going to put the decimal point straight up into the problem. Remember that's first. And now we can do 2 times 2 is 4. And then we're going to bring down the 1. And 2 times 5 is 10, giving us another 1. And now we're going to annex that 0, bring it on down. And we need another 5. And we have a lovely 0 at the bottom, leaving our answer. I can go ahead and just circle this up here and label it answer is 2 and 55 hundredths, which is coinciding with our estimate. So I hinted that there will be some word problems. <laughs> real life, real world problems have context to them. They don't just say, okay, divide these two numbers. So here's a, an example of a problem that I'm going to walk through with you. I'd like you to try it on your own first, so I want you to pause and actually try this, and then you can hit resume, play, and then you'll see me walk through it with you and clarify any questions, hopefully, that you might have had when you tried it. So with this word problem, hopefully you used cubes. So I'm going to mark up my problem with the important numbers being circled. The key word, how many times as much. The question is actually a typo. Sorry, I forgot my question mark. But this is the entire question that we have to do, and we are going to be rounding to the nearest tenths place. So that's important to remember. Now the trick for these word problems is figuring out which number is the dividend and which number is the divisor. When the question is being asked how many times as much, it sounds very wordy, but really all it's talking about is that somebody's making more, somebody's making less, and that guy or gal, in this case, Erin, who's making less, how many times would she have to reproduce the amount of money that she made in order to get to, in this case, Frank's amount? So it's really just a different way of saying, let's divide these numbers and find out what you'd have to multiply Erin's amount by to get Frank's. So we are going to be dividing. 
And the in this case, Frank has more money. So he's the one that we want to split into groups of Aaron's amount. I can draw a picture as well. This represents Frank's amount. We want to know about how many times can we put Aaron's amount in here. Can we do it twice? Is it two times amount? Two times the amount? Is it three times the amount? We don't know until we actually divide. So we want to know how many times will Erin have to have her $185.30 in order for it to total how much Frank earned. That's just a little background of trying to decide which number is which. That is something that you're going to have to do, and it is problem specific. There's not one clear cut answer. The bigger number is not always the dividend. All right, let's actually divide and set up our problem with the decimals. We're going to start with the divisor and then I'm going to put my dividend inside. Okay. So we want this number to be a whole number. We're going to multiply by 10 and then that will be 1, 8, 5, Three. The zero can get dropped off. Any number with the zero in the tenths place is just a whole number. What we do to the divisor, though, we have to do the same thing to the dividend. So now we have 3, 5, 7, 2.5. So these numbers are bigger. It's not like the example that we did together um, a few moments before. Don't let these numbers intimidate you. Let's use our number sense and our estimation to guide us on how we're going to divide this. So I'm just going to switch my screen to give myself a little bit more room to work. Okay, so now I have just the problem. I have a little bit more room now to show my work. And this spot I'm saving for my thinking space because with big numbers I'm going to have to do a little bit of thinking on the side. I'm going to take this divisor and I'm going to think about it as 2,000 because 1,800 is very close to 2,000. The dividend I'm going to say is actually I'm going to think about it as 3,000. I'm not going to go all the way up to 4,000. So if the dividend was 3000 and the divisor was 2000 the only thing I could do is have 1 times 2000 and then go from there. So I think the same thing's going to apply for this problem. So I'm going to put a 1 up here and the 1853 underneath and subtract. If this ends up being bigger then I made a mistake, but Let's subtract and find out. So 4 minus 3, 1, borrow again. So we have 1,719. So it's just a little under, we're good. Next, we're going to bring down the 5. That makes this 17,195. Now, don't freak. Let's use our estimation. 17,000 is pretty close to 18,000. And I'm looking at an 1,800. So the difference between 18,000, if I were going to divide it by 1,800, is just 10. Because I would just add another zero. But my number isn't exactly 18,000, it's a little under. So if I do this, it's not going to work. So I'm going to go and try to find out what this number, 1,853 times 9 will be, because I think it's really close to 10. So I just used estimation there. I just did some thinking out loud to show you that using estimation will help you guess so that you're just not randomly going 1,853 times 5. 1,000, oh, that didn't work, because you're going to be multiplying forever. So you have to be specific and 
uh, calculated on how you find and pick numbers. So 1853, we're going to multiply by 9, and hopefully it's right around 17,000. So we have 27, 45 plus 2 is another 47. And then we have 8 times 9, which is 72. So that's 76. And we have 9 plus 7, 16. So our new number is 16,677, which is less than 17,000. So we're going to have a 9 here. And it's going to be 16677. When we subtract, we're going to get a new answer here. 15 minus 7 is 8. A 1, and that was a borrow, and now we have a 5, and that's it. So 518. Now, hopefully you were yelling at me in the video saying, Mrs. Trumbull, you forgot something. I just realized halfway through that I forgot to drive the decimal point up. So I'm going to fix that now. Right now I have 1.9 as my answer. And the reason why I realized it now is that I'm wondering how far do I have to go? Luckily the problem said round to the nearest tenth. I have a number in the tenths place. I have to go one more place so that I can know, is this going to be a 1.9, or is this digit right here going to be above 5, and I'm going to have to bump it up. So I'm going to annex my 0. I'm just changing colors so you can see the stages of what I'm doing here. And now I have 5,180, and I have about 2,000, remember. So I'm going to go over here and say, okay, if I had 5,000, and I had to divide it by 2,000, what number would I start with? Well, I know 2 times 2 is 4, so 2 times 2,000 is going to be 4,000. So I'm going to use a 2. I don't know what 2 times 1,853 is, so I'm going to have to come over here and scratch it out. Times 2. We have a 6, we have a 10, we have a 17, and we have a 3. So we have 3,706. That goes underneath here. And we can subtract just to finish it out. We technically don't need to, but let's be precise and accurate as well as we can be. And 11 minus 7 is 4. There we go. 1,470 is our remainder. But we can stop because now we know that we can just have our answer be 1.9. All that to say, as a final answer, Frank makes 1.9 times as much money. Now, if you just wrote this, that would have been sufficient. I just wrote it as a sentence to give you back that context that we are finding out how many times more Frank has compared to Aaron. So in class tomorrow, uh, we're going to practice this more. The hardest part about um, dividing with decimals Besides remembering to move the decimal point so that it's a whole number, is figuring out those word problems. We're going to work more together tomorrow in class. See you then.